Okay, in this video, we're gonna dive right in and download Postgres, download PG Admin, download all the tools we're gonna to need for the whole course. Now, Postgres is completely free, PG Admin is completely free, so there's nothing to purchase ever, uh, which is a great reason to use Postgres. You know, there are other databases that are free, MySQL, um, but for the most part, Postgres is thought to be a sort of more advanced database, just a better database. I don't know how true that is or not, but uh, that's what we're going to focus on in this course. So head over to pgadmin.org, or you could just Google, you know, Postgres, and it'll, you know, give you a link to this website. And this is the site. We've got the Postgres elephants. <laughs> that's cool. So just come over here to the left-hand side and click this download link. Now, right now we're on pgadmin4, 4.3 or 4 or something like that doesn't really matter if this has changed by the time you've watched this video, no big deal. If it's changed to PG admin five, there may be some differences, you know, major releases have differences. Um, but uh, if it's just a different version of four, you're, you're absolutely fine. It should be able to get by even if it's changed to five, but uh, maybe not. We'll have to see when five comes out. So uh, just come down here and find your operating system. You see, we have Mac, we have Let's see, Windows, APT, that's probably Linux. Um, now, there are older versions, PG Admin 3. I don't recommend you do this. This is no longer supported. Uh, if you need it for a legacy project of some sort, you can get it here. Uh, so that's cool. So just click on the one you want. We want Windows. Now, here is, let's see, you just want the latest version, I suppose. And we're on, version 3.4, it looks like, of PG Admin 4. I'm not sure why. That's a strange 3.4 of version 4. Shouldn't it be 4.4? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, click the latest one, whatever it is. And you can see we've got this stuff right here. Now, I'm not sure. I've never actually downloaded this. I don't think we want this. We want to come over here to download a binary. We want something that's already packaged already works for us and uh, is ready to go. Otherwise, we're going to be compiling code and doing all kinds of crazy things. We don't want any part of that. So now you see we have a list of binary packages. And this is postgres.sql.org forward slash download. And so we've we've switched to a completely different website. This is no longer PG admin. And so find your operating system. Here we have some, looks like, FreeBSD and OpenBSD, some Linux, more, more Linux, Mac, Solaris, and Windows. So we want Windows. And there's a couple of different options for installers, Windows ex installers. Um, we don't want this big SQL. We probably want this one up here. Now, the thing about this one is it'll try to install the stack builder thing that has all kinds of other things in it, and we don't need any of that. So when we get right down to it, we'll unclick the stack builder thing and when we're installing this, but I'll talk about that later. So just click the download the installer thing. And it asks for the version of PostSQL that you want. We'll just get the latest one, version 10.5. If it's 10 point something else, that's fine too. Just pick the latest one. And our operating system is Windows X86 64 bit. So you're either on a Windows 32 bit or 64 bit. Chances are you're on a Windows 64 bit. There just aren't 32 bit computers around anymore, I don't think. So uh, once you've selected that, click download now. And the box should pop up shortly. Okay, so you can save this anywhere. I'm just going to save this on my desktop. And you can see there's a one next to mine because I've already downloaded this in the past. And in fact, uh, I'm just going to navigate to that right now. So I'm going to head over to my desktop. This is off screen um, on my other monitor, so you can't see this, but you'll have to wait till the file downloads. You can see down here. And then once it does, you can just click it. Well, it's almost downloaded already. <laughs> so maybe we'll just wait for a second here. Man, it's speeding right down. Um, Yeah. Okay, so it's done. Almost. Okay. All right, so... When you see this, it's done downloading. You can just click it here, or you can go to your desktop and double click it, whichever you prefer. I'm just gonna click this, and it's a relatively painless installation, but there are a couple of little things we need to look at. 
So as soon as it pops up here. Okay, so the first thing that it's installing is the Microsoft Visual C++ 2013 redistributable for the x86, you know, 64-bit computer. You may already have this on your computer. I probably do, but it looks like it's installing it anyway. And I'm just going to go ahead and pause this, and we're going to wait for this to do its thing, and we'll pick up as soon as it's finished. Okay, so that finished doing its thing, and now we get this set up Postgres SQL sort of uh, installation screen. So we can just go ahead and click next. And it asks you where you want to install this. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to leave it in program files, Postgres, SQL, uh, backslash 10. Uh, but if you want to put it in like C Postgres or something, you can go ahead and do that. No big deal. Uh, next. Now here is where I was talking about earlier, this stack builder thing. We don't need this. It says it may be used to download, install additional tools, drivers, applications, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to be doing anything like that in this course. So we can get rid of that. Now we don't also, we're not going to be using the command line, but you need this to install the rest of these things. If you read through here, it says um, it's a required option. So we leave that checked and we definitely want PG admin four and we definitely want post SQL or Postgres SQL server. And so we're good to go. Click next. And now it's going to ask you where you want to save your data. I recommend just doing the default in the same sort of directory structure. You know, program files, post SQL 10 slash data. I didn't click next. Now it's asking for a, a password for your main Postgres database. So I'm just going to type in password. Let's try it again. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-1-2-3. P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-1-2-3. Now, obviously, you're going to want to pick a stronger password if you're doing this for like real world application. If you're going to deploy this to a web server somewhere, pick a strong password, but we're just sort of messing around and learning this. So I'm just going to pick password one, two, three, but whatever you do pick, write it down because we're going to need it a little bit later to connect to the database. So click next. Now it's going to ask you what port number the SQL server should run on. And it's 5432. That's the default. Write that down as well. You may need that. Um, in fact, you're definitely going to, well, we'll see. <laughs> um, you know, we're going to enter this into the web browser to actually connect to PG Admin 4, but I think it'll put it up there for us so we don't have to actually memorize this, but write it down anyway, just in case. Um, but this is the default port. So I'll click next. Um, this is asking for the new database cluster, the locale. We just want the default. It's asking for like the actual country, I guess. So we'll just pick default. Okay, so here's a summary of everything. Now, Here's one more thing to sort of note. The database super user name, the username is Postgres. A lot of times, you know, if you have any sort of experience with other databases like MySQL, your username is likely going to be root. Um, not so here. The one they've given us, given us is Postgres just out of the box. That's the way it is. And so just sort of keep note of that too. And I think that's it. We can click next. It's ready to get going. Click next again. And it's actually now installing. Now, this actually takes a little bit of time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And we'll pick this up as soon as it finishes doing its thing. OK, so setup has finished installing PostSQL on your computer. Click Finish. And we are done. So in the next video, we'll fire this thing up and take a look.